Our guest worked in the center of Dutch diplomacy in many roles, for instance, as deputy political director, as NATO ambassador, and as UN ambassador. He dealt with Bosnia, Kosovo, Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, Syria. Yes, he supported the Iraqi invasion in 2003, politically. And he still doesn't regret it. And he sends his kind regards to the Commission David. Although he is at the same time quite critical about the uh, post-invasion period. His views on war and peace go to the heart of Dutch foreign policy. And he belongs to a special category. One cannot afford not to listen to him. Enough flattery. Give a warm welcome to <laughs> Hamilton Harper. Well, what to say after such an introduction? I can only disappoint you. My experience in the UN is that there is nearly irresponsible approach to military affairs, I find. The mandates on the whole are very general, then it's left to the commander. You have to see whether you can find the troops for the task, and if troops task analysis is barely made, and certainly it's not sure that, for instance, in Mali still at the moment, the troop level required is still on the reach. So there is a real problem that, um, for the UN, that either <coughs> it, it, it manages to change its overall approach towards more difficult peacekeeping, as is the trend in particular in Africa, where more of this robust peacekeeping is necessary, or that regional organizations will simply take the place of the UN, particularly in Africa. <coughs> as the institutions have a primary responsibility for ensuring peace and security in their part of the world, just as NATO and the EU have replaced the UN in that role in Europe. So the relationship between the NATO and the UN as it has developed over the last 65 years is one from total separation, two different worlds, to first confrontation, confrontation <coughs> that was in Bosnia, and both were there on the ground militarily. You had the so-called double key, which led to endless difficulties between the two organizations and sometimes non-execution of necessary decisions. Bad start. And I have a quote here from the NATO Secretary General at that time, Billy Klaas, who said, if we cannot set the rules of our military operations, they, the UN, will have to find other idiots to support these <laughs> Well, in, in the end, that didn't happen because uh, a, a complementarity developed between NATO and, the, and the, in the sense that in integrated peacekeeping operations, NATO would be on the ground in a military sense and the UN and in the lead on the military side and the UN would be in the lead on the civilian side. What role do you think the UN and NATO should play in the Ukraine? They should include Ukraine, but uh, First, before they do that, they should come to a settlement with the Russian government because uh, if uh, you can't include a country in crisis because you would inherit a crisis uh, in which you didn't have any say. They should play cautious, but they should support Ukraine in the long term. Putin has given NATO a new lease of life. If you look at the results of Ukraine, is that true? I don't think NATO needs a new lease of life. Like I said, I, I, NATO is, I think, an international public good to a certain degree, even being put to the service of the UN, but certainly for the member states and countries cooperating. You don't need a threat for, for that instrument to exist. Uh, but, but the second, yeah, the second point is, uh, I think... Um, well, you, you, said, you said that NATO was looking for a new narrative earlier this year. Well, to get the European citizens more committed, more involved with defense in general and with NATO in particular? Well, I would say defense in particular. I mean, before it begins with national defense expenditures. If, 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 we, if we can't get agreement on, on, on the necessity of a sufficient defense budget, our, own, our forces are hit first of all, and indirectly NATO is hit. Like I said, I have a very functional approach to NATO. NATO is a useful instrument 
to build military cooperation, and we need military cooperation to be effective and to be relevant. But if the, if the basics for military cooperation are not there, because the armed forces are too weak, or too small, I think NATO will suffer. But that's not where the problem is. Now, what would be your assessment if Turkey, and I would like to use the word hindered, is hindered by IRS, and will ask for assistance support of the NATO allies? If the Turks would send, send in troops, who would then be, some, some of them or many of them would be killed. Um, is that for the alliance an, an armed attack? On one of the alliance's members, um, and the answer you 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 probably will get if it's only five or six. You say okay, that's the risk of the game. If it would be six hundred, then you would have some something dramatic where the alliance would be forced to react. I don't know in what way that that will be. That will depend on the Turks also. Uh, but it is it's it's a bit of an in-between case. And, and no clear answer at all. I mean, you don't want to be dragged into a conflict without knowing it uh, by, by the action of somebody else, uh, who then says, but you are my ally, you should help me out. Uh, so he should, that, that country then should be, should be uh, in the mode of consulting. I don't, I'm not sure the Turks are there yet, but they themselves want NATO involved. Has this meeting changed your opinion on the role of the UN and NATO? No, it hasn't uh, changed my opinion. Um, I think uh, that's. I, I agree with, uh, with with the importance of, of NATO, and and that um, you know, regardless of what is going to happen and if they are going to intervene, uh, that NATO is extremely important right now, and um, that uh, yeah, that, that it, sh it should be ready to maybe do something at a certain point, but that it's not very clear yet. Um, what, what that it is, although there are certain red lines that we also uh, said, you know, that if, if it gets to new invasions in other countries, that, it, that, it, uh, that, that is a, a very strong red line. I learned more about the identity, the differences between the UN and NATO. The UN is more about peacekeeping and NATO more about uh, uh, war. So what did you think of the presentation? It was quite informative. Uh, informative. Um, I heard of lo a lot of new facts uh, and background news. Um, I had a question about, uh, well, the NATO is the are the crisis uh, from in, uh, well, ISIS and, and Ukraine are they a uh, blessing in disguise? And uh, well, what I basically heard was that uh, that that's not the case. So um, the essence of that is that. You don't always have to believe what's in the newspaper, so uh, that's also one of the reasons why I attend this kind of meeting. So that I don't only rely, uh, I don't only have to rely on what's in the newspaper. Thank you.